All right, guys, we're gonna do random assignment. Uh, some of this stuff's out of order, like I said, because of the, the unit that we're in, I'm trying to fit it in in certain classes and stuff like that. So we're talking about uh, random design. So we'll just take something pretty relatively straightforward. We've got 48 tomato plants, and we want to test the growth according to different levels of fertilizer, let's say. So the idea behind random chance is that each plant or each experimental unit has the op same opportunity to be put in each group by random chance. So you have to do it randomly. You can't just choose uh, what needs to be done. So the idea is this. So if I have 48 tomato plants, I would number the 48 tomato plants. So I would number them 01 to number 48. So I'd have 48. This is an easy way to explain it because that's one of the things you'll have to do. I have, uh, I number the tomato plants one to 48 and then I put their names in a hat, put the numbers in a hat, throw them in a hat and I choose a random tomato plant. And then the first 16 go here, the second 16, go here, and then the third 16, go here. So what I mean by that is, is I keep pulling them out randomly. One, I got number one, I got number five, I got number eight, I got number 14. So I'm taking those plants that are labeled with this number, and the first 16 I get, I'm going to the first group, and they're getting the two times the fertilizer. And then after I get the first 16, I got group B that are getting half the fertilizer. And then I pull the next 16 out. And once I'm done with the next 16, I have 16 left and they all go into the third one. That's the idea that using random chance to assign groups. You do it with names in a hat. It's the easiest way to explain it. Put the tomato plants numbered one through 48 into a hat, randomly choose a tomato plant and assign the first 16 to group one, the first 16 to group two, the first 16 to group three. So that's the easiest way to explain a random chance. You can also use, just had it, you can also use your calculator. And so this is like names in a hat. Make sure you explain this in detail. Or you can use a simple random sample using rand int, and I would say 1 to 48 generate 16, okay, without replacement. So you got to make sure you don't get the same number twice. Remember, once we take the tomato plant and we move it up here, so what's this going to do, it's going to calculate <coughs> numbers 1 to 48, 16 of them, it'll give you a list of 16, and you take all those plants, you pick up all those plants and put them over here for that one, okay? Uh, so that's the idea of a simple random sample or completely randomized design. Completely randomized, you use random chance to assign the groups. Always, completely randomized, it's always by random. So then the idea is control. Making sure you have a baseline from which you can see a difference. A lot of people will think about control as like, um, uh, when you do uh, vaccines, you have people that get the vaccine and you have people that don't get the vaccine. People that don't get the vaccine are the control group, but the reason why it's a control group is we're making sure you have a baseline from so you can see a difference. So the people that don't get the vaccine are the control group. We got to see if they, if, if the people that got the vaccine don't get as sick or get the flu, let's say, as much as the people with the control group, okay? So the control group is not necessarily, we don't call it always the control group, and we don't say, oh, the control group gets nothing. Remember, we're establishing a baseline. Now, here's the idea of the baseline. So if we're looking here, if we're looking here, the baseline is the tomato plants that get the same amount of fertilizer. 
So in other words, the same amount of fertilizer, I just wrote this up quickly, the same amount of fertilizer as they got last year, let's say. The group that gets half the fertilizer is we're going to look for a difference from the group that got the same amount of fertilizer. And then if they get two times the amount of fertilizer, then the group that got the same amount of fertilizer. That control is this baseline. So we're, the control is all about baselines, establishing a baseline so you can see if there's a difference, so you can see a difference. And then the final piece of this thing, so we do all this stuff and we grow them and we do all this and then we measure the growth by group, by data. So replication means this, that you use enough experimental units to show a difference. So if we have 16 plants, we can find the average and we definitely could probably probably find an accurate average or an accurate X bar and compare all three levels. Now, what if we only used five tomato plants? Let's just say we change this to six. Let's say we change this to six. This would have two in it. This would have two tomato plants in it. This would have two tomato plants in it. We get over here after measuring it, we'd only have two plants in each group to come up with an average measurement of growth. I don't think that's enough experimental units to show a difference. Because what if you get one that uh, got a disease and now you only have one? So you have to make sure that you have enough experimental units to show a difference. And we'll talk about that in the next couple of chapters of what you actually need for that. So again, how we set up a completely randomized design. Take what you're, whatever you're doing, doing a random assignment using random chance, names in a hat, or a random number generator, which is on our calculator. We assign each one to equal groups. We assign the treatments. One of the treatments is usually a baseline. We kind of call that a control. So there's always some sort of control that we're comparing to, but we don't always call it a control. And then we take our measurements, we do whatever measurement we have, and the idea is that we're using enough experimental units to show that we can find a difference or no difference, depending on what we're trying to do. That's the idea behind random assignment, guys, and a completely randomized design. The key piece is right here. You have to be able to explain this. Names in a hat is the easiest way to explain it. Good luck.